Right, welcome to our 2021 Coleman 262 BH. Starting right in the back corner here of your bumper. Just gonna pull that plug out, reach in a little bit. We've got your sewer hose in here. So just take a note of our two little ears there. Those are how we hook it up to your sewer system. And then the hose itself does stretch out to about 20 feet long. We're just keeping it stored in the bumper back here. Just to keep any sort of stench out of the trailer. Keep things at a little bit fresher. Then that cap there just kind of presses on. Up here, we've got a cable and satellite inlet. So a coax cable plug into there. Fire up at your TV location. Down another step, we've got your city water connection here. So you're just going to take a water hose, plug it into there. Turn on the water and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Down from there, we've got your sewer system. So you're just gonna kind of take this cap, press in a little bit as you turn, pull it off, and then you can see you got the same two ears there that you had in your sewer hose. So you'll be attaching that the same way, just press it in, give it that turn, clicks in, and there you have it. On the left, you got a gray valve, on the right, you got a black. So that black valve is controlling your black tank, which is filled from your toilet. So that's, of course, gonna be your dirtiest water. So when we're dumping tanks, we're gonna dump that first. Once that's done, we'll come over to the gray, and that is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. So typically cleaner water, we'll dump that last just to help keep that hose as clean as possible. Up here, we've got your shore cords that'll port lower there or just pop on open. You pull out your hose from there. Again, it was about 20 feet long. Standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are going to have that. You can plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to a standard outlet, charge your batteries, run your fridge, and you got the power to do so. Making our way down towards the front. We've got your storage compartment here. So as you open that up, you just got these magnetic latches there. Hold the door open for you. And then you can see it just sees straight through to the other side. Yeah. Around front of the units, you do have a dual battery set up here, so you do have two batteries in there. So as long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back, those batteries are charging for you, as well as through your short cord to your tow vehicle. Your propane tanks, you just got these two little knobs here. So if you loosen those off, push them back, you get access to your propane valves. For the video, just pull it off. And then we'll show you this change over in the back here. So you can see our, our uh, arrow here is currently pointing over to this tank with that green back there. So if that green were to turn red, it's just letting you know there's no propane in the system. So we just be turning it on. It'll go green, letting you know there's no propane there. Now, if you've got the tank open and that goes red, it's just letting you know that tank's now empty. So you just take your change over, flip it over to the other side and run off of this tank while you get the other one filled. All right. And in the very front, we've got your power tongue jack here. So on the left is just a light switch. So you can see that's on, off, up is up, down is down. Around the other side of the unit here, you've got the same storage compartment there, as well as a water hose and that park adapter I was telling you about. So your 30 amp cord into there, 15 to a standard outlet. So this little cap right here, if we just open that up, we've got your stabilizers here. So down is down, up is up. You can see those guys make their way down. And once this guy contacts the ground, it will firm itself up. And you'll see it'll just get rid of any sort of bouncy sway in the unit. You'll hear this motor load up and that's when we'll want to stop. Once you hear that load, you're going to want to stop. If you're to continue extending, it can actually wear out the gears inside of that uh, gearbox there, causing you issues. And as we make our way back, got your entry door here, got your two exterior speakers here as well. This right here is just a vent for your stove. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. So you do have a fan inside that you're going to want to have turned on with this flap here open. So close that flap once you're done, just kind of press it in. You'll hear it click. And there we go. Kind of locks in. Then you just get the two little finger ports to pop it off open once you do need it. Straight down from there, you've got your fresh water connection. So you're just going to pop this cap off of there, take your water hose, stick it into there, turn on the water, and that'll fill up your fresh water tank. The drain for that tank is just right down here. You see a little red line there with a little valve on it. So just open that up, drains out the fresh water tank. Right beside it here, you've got a GFI protected outlet. So reset is just inside the unit. We'll get there in a minute. Right here, we've got a service port for your fridge. Nothing back there for you to worry about. It's just for service. Straight down from there, you've got your furnace. So of course, whenever you're using your furnace, you just wanna make sure nothing's blocking this off. It does get hot. For the back of the unit, we've got your rear stabilizer here. So same thing as the front, down is down, up is up. And one thing I will just go over on this side real quick, you can see it equalizes, right? So it's not gonna level your unit. It's just gonna stabilize it. One leg will go before the other. And that'll just frame it up. And again, once you hear that load, you want to stop. To the very back of the unit, we've got your hot water tank here. So you just get that one little keyway there, just line that up, pops on open. Before you ever turn this guy on with the control, which is just inside, we just want to hit that release valve right there. 
Now if this hot water tank were full, you'd get a shot of water would come out of there. We do currently have the unit winterized right now, so this guy's empty. Otherwise, you would get that shot of water out of there and you wanna make sure you get that shot out before you turn it on. If you don't have that water in there, it could be empty and you could burn things out by turning it on. Now once we get inside and do turn it on, I will go over a reset procedure and the button that I'll refer to is just right here. Okay. Close that back up, lock it back down with the keyway, and there you have it. On the other side here, you've just got your exterior shower, so you'll get a key just like this guy here. Let's stick it on into there, open her up, and you get the standard three foot hose, the standard head, hot and cold water. So if your dog's out getting muddy, you can spray them off before he gets inside. Close it up and lock it up. And then lastly outside, just straight up here, we've got a uh, pre-wired mount for an observation camera. So if you're looking to put that in, you can do so. Right. Now we'll make our way inside of the unit. The door here is just on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. Right. Yellow handle, either way, will undo the latches. And we can open up the stairs. You just have that pin here and this pin here. You can pop those out, extend the lengths of the legs based on whatever your campsite needs are. Set her down, make her way inside, and first things first, once you get in, you do have your fire extinguisher right there, so standard, pull the pin point and shoot. Straight up from there, you've got your monitor panel and you kind of your control system here. So all the way over on the right, that switch does all of your interior lights. The switch on the left there does your awning light outside. The awning itself is just right up top here, so press and hold extend, and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, you'll see a little black flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to want to stop. If you were to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case it would be accelerating, it, in which case it would be holding water and accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So once you see that flap, we're going to stop. There it is. It's just a little bit sticky there. There we go see that flap you see the tube and then we'll stop now if it were to start raining it's going to be holding some water anyway so what you can do is just grab either arm front or rear make sure that knob there is loose pull it down in and tighten it down and you see that changes the pitch of your awning out at the head allowing it to then drain water off but if you like that angle better because it does give you more shade you can do the same thing with the arm up front and get yourself a bit more shade before you ever bring it back in though, you just wanna make sure these knobs are back loosened off and fully extended, just so that we're not running the risk of bending anything. So we'll come back inside, press and hold the track. And again, just making sure that our fabric is over top of the tube and just press and hold until she closes up. Another thing to keep in mind if you're awning is it does just catch the wind. So once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour of wind, you're gonna to wanna to bring it back in just so that it's not running the risk of bending those arms. Once it's in all the way, it'll just kind of close up tight with the trailer and it'll stay there. And there you go. Okay. So on the very bottom here, we've got your slide out room. So same style switch as the, the uh, awning. Just press and hold out and that awning, or the slide will make its way out. Once it is fully extended, you'll hear some clicks from the motors letting you know they've reached their stall. Once you hear those, we're gonna stop. Those are the clicks we're waiting for. Mm -hmm. Up from there, you've got your water pump switch. So turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh water tank to pressurize your lines. And then over here on the left side, we've got your water heater on gas. So you turn that switch on, that light there is gonna come on, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that light goes out, the sequence has started and it'll try that three times. If after the third try, it hasn't fired up, that light's gonna come on and it's gonna stay on. At that point, we'll be going and using that reset button that we've shown you. Alright, so stood right here, you can hear a couple of clicks of that igniter, and then you can hear the whir of the flame, we know that tank's good. Yeah. Up from there, we've got your monitor systems, so on the very bottom here, you've got batteries, so you can see we're currently charging because we're plugged in, good, and then fair and low as you use it up. Fresh tank, so as you fill that up, you go to a third, two thirds, and full, same idea for your black, your gray one, and your gray two. Gray two, I believe, isn't actually hooked up in this unit. Uh, down on the wall here, you've got a USB outlet, as well as a power outlet there. Above your sink, you just got that little light. Hot and cold water with the mobile head. A little bit of storage up here as well. 
down below the sink, you got a bit more storage too. Just being mindful of our drain there. We, of course, don't want to be breaking that. And then back by the entrance, this door, if we just open that up, kind of gives you access to the same area. Then we'll make our way into the bedroom here. So in the bedroom, your two lights, just on their own center push buttons there, as well as the one above your head. And on the foot of the bed, if we just pick that up, you can see you get a little bit of storage part, compartment down there. Your doors are just sliding, so you just get the little travel latch there, just unhook that, slides. Same thing on the other side there. A little bit of closet space here with USB and the power outlet down below, as well as, I guess we could call that CPAP storage back there. Blinds throughout the unit, pretty well just sit where you leave them. For your window here, you're just gonna take these two tabs, pinch them in, lift it up, and there you have it. Leave your screen down if you want it. Nice little stops for it. And there you go. The other side is pretty well identical. You get your little bit of closet space there, USB, power, and then the same sort of window here. Got your TV mounting bracket over here, so that would just get mounted up to the stud that's in this wall here. Power outlet as well as a cable and satellite outlet for it. And then right here, you've got another TV mounting bracket. Again, power outlet for it, as well as your cable and satellite outlet. This one is a little bit more involved. On the left, you've got antenna power. So just turn that on, you get that green light letting you know your antenna's turned on. It'll just help clear up that, uh, you know, that radio signal as well as your TV signal. And then on the right side, you get Wi-Fi. So if you do have that hooked up as well, you turn that on, you get Wi-Fi throughout the unit. Down from there, you've got your car style stereo. So just the power button there on the left turns it on. And then if you just hit that power button, you can cycle through all of your different modes, right? So you get Bluetooth, radio, and auxiliary. Auxiliary just right in the front here. So we'll go to boot radio real quick, hit band, and we can cycle through all of those different settings. So you get your FMs and your AMs. All right, seek, just with your little buttons there. Look for those little things that you can and there you have it. Volume is, of course, just with the dial. If we press the dial, we can get into our settings. So you get your illumination settings, as well as your bass, and your treble, your balance. So that would be front and rear. And then your fader for, sorry, balance is left and right. Fader is front and rear. Uh, with your fader, if you have it, faded fully front, it'll run your in your interior speakers. If you have it faded fully right, or sorry, rear, that'll run just your outside speakers. Right? And then if you have it just at zero, that's gonna be equal between your inner and outer. Right? Hit that again, you can go into your EQ and just choose all those settings there. Right? Once we're done, just press and hold that power button and it turns itself off. A little bit of storage down below. And then on the slide here, center push button light. The center cushion just folds on now. You can get your cup holders there. And if you flip that up, you grab the bottom of the couch, fold it down, you get the bed here as well. Two lights over the dinette. And again, the lines here just on our own sliders. That red tab means this is an emergency exit, so pull that back, slide it all the way, get your screen out of the way as well. And you'd hop on out. That window is the exact same. Your dinette's here, so if we just take the table here and kind of wiggle it up, move it off to the side. Got our table legs out of here, just lay them down. And then you can see you got these little black blocks there. We'll be laying the table down on those. Taking our back cushions to fill in the middle. And you get another little bedding area here. Up on the wall here, you've got your thermostat. So the power button on the left there will wake it up. We'll start from off, hit it again, and that's mode. Come into fan speed. Typically, we're just gonna leave that in auto. Whoops. Unless we're looking to move some air, in which case you can choose your high or low fan. Right, so low fan, turn it on at the air conditioner here. Right. So that's your low fan. So just for example, with this louver here closed, you're gonna be moving your air through all of your ducting and the ceiling. With this little over here open, it just dumps all its air into the living room. So when you first get out to your campsite, you want this louver open, cool off this area as quickly as possible, and then you can close it off and start moving the air throughout. And then you also get your high fan here. Now again, this is just moving air, there's no cooling involved in that. You'll hear it turn off the low fan and kick on the high fan. 
There we go. All right. Like I said though, typically if you're looking to run your furnace or your air conditioner, you're just gonna leave that in auto though. And then after that fan speed, if we hit mode again, it'll come down into cool. Temp selection is just with your arrows there. And that'll bring in some uh, air conditioning to the fan as well. So you can kind of hear that click of it coming in. You know it's going. And after cool, if we just hit that mode again, it'll come down into furnace. And because we're in auto, it'll turn off the air conditioning fan and turn on the furnace. Again, time selection is just with your arrows. Furnace is moving its air through your floor registers. And then this here is just the return air for your furnace. So you just want to make sure that's not blocked off. Now it is, this is technically a used unit. However, it is only a year old. So you may still get a little bit of a smell throughout the unit when you run this furnace. That's perfectly normal. It's just a new furnace smell. And after that, if we just hit mode again, you'll see it comes back down to off and then it just cycles back around. We got your little bit of storage or pantry space here. Down below that, we've got your power converter. So press the top and center, pops on open. Get all of your breakers on the center here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on. And then on the right side, you get all of your fuses. If a fuse were to ever pop, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. Now your fridge, pretty well fully automatic. Hit that power button there. Green light means it's running good on uh, AC power. If that light were to turn yellow it's letting you know it's running on gas and if it turns red like it says there just check that your gas is on and you've got propane so your fridge down here and your freezer up top micro cabinet storage space microwave here is pretty standard just like home Below that, we've got your range vent. So you got a light here as well as the fan. So this is that fan I was saying outside you want turned on whenever you're running the stove. For the stove, you just get the bifold cover, just flips on back. Then you're gonna take a knob, turn it over to high, hit it with the sparker, and there you have it. Okay. Now the first time you go to use this, uh, any propane appliance, especially if it's been a while since you've been in the unit, it may take a minute to fire these things up just so it's got a clear air out of the propane lines. So that is perfectly normal. Once we're done, just flipping it back over. This button on the right side there, if you turn that on, just turns on all of your knob lights as well as your stove light. For your stove, you got the knob on the right side here, just press that in over that little flame, press and hold, and then hit the igniter. And then if we just watch through the bottom here, you'll see that pilot light fire up as soon as we clear the air out of that line. There we go. And once you get it going, you just want to hold that knob in for another couple of seconds, then you can release and it'll hold itself. Then you can just turn up to your desired temperature and she'll fire right up. Once we're done, turn it back down to just pilot. It'll hold just the pilot light for you. However, if you're leaving or going traveling, you just want to make sure that guy's right off. A little bit of storage space down below it, as well as the door space here. Now, if you're looking to winterize the unit, this drawer right here is what will be coming out. You just got the two little ears on the side. Just push this one down. The other side goes up. Then you'd pull this drawer out and you've got access to your, to your water pump right back there. You do have a winterization kit installed already as well. Or you get this one panel right here, three screws in the bottom, pop that out and you get access to it as well. Okay, and been all over this. We get your little bunk bunkhouse back here. So they are both identical. You get the little push button light, USB charging, open bunk otherwise. Down below, like I said, same thing. You get the light up on the wall there, USB charging with the addition of your window down here. Emergency exit, you're just gonna pull this red tab to get rid of the screen. Take this handle here, throw it outside and hop on out. And just to continue with your winterization, your hot water tank access is right underneath this panel here. So you get this little hole here. You can open up this panel here and you get access to some storage space here. And then if you just take this panel, lift it up, there's your hot water tank back there. It does also have the winterization kit installed on it. So if you're looking to do that, you've got the power to do so. And then your bathroom. So as you come on in here, you got the light switches just up on the wall right there. Put your uh, mirror there, right down below your light switch is your GFR protected outlet. It's test on the bottom, reset up top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Hot and cold water at the sink, 
a little bit of storage down below just being mindful of our drains and our water lines toilet standard you just get your little flush right in the front there a little bit of storage space in here and then right behind me for your shower you get your standard hose and head hot and cold water of course with the little bathtub and then your roof vents just turn that knob to open it up you get that little push button in the back turns on the fan as simple as that now, if you have any other questions on the unit please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272